I'm Nick Altmeyer with LincolnLewisCounty.com. We're here this morning with Richard Chartrand. He's running for District 5 Legislator, which encompasses mostly the village of Lowville. Um, there's a few sections that aren't included, but for the most part, it's the village of Lowville. And uh, Mr. Chartrand's currently our District 5 Legislator, and he's served on the board since 2014. Um, so if you want to tell us just a little bit about yourself, Mr. Chartrand, and uh, maybe why you're deciding to run again and what some of your goals may be. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, as you said, I've been on the board since 2014. Uh, I've, I'm running on experience, uh, education, and knowledge in the position and commitment and dedication to the community. Yeah. Uh, some of my experiences, I was uh, with the Directorate of Public Works at Fort Drum for 23 years. That included designing uh, multi-million dollar construction projects for the new base at Fort Drum. Uh, it went on to include maintenance and repair and taking care of those buildings afterwards. Uh, I had various sections that really com relate to the county. Uh, we did the roads, plowing, super, uh, repairs. We did water, sewer, and electric. In fact, I was the Fort Drum rep for the water, sewer, and electric infrastructure at that time. Uh, I also ran a small business in Lowell for 14 years and I have experience with the problems that small business people in Lewis County put up with yeah. and I'm able to help them a little bit. Uh, on the education piece of it, uh, I have a, master, or a master's degree from Syracuse in public administration which dealt heavily with public budgeting which is, I'm finding very useful right now uh, as well as public laws and interactions with different community efforts. Uh, I have an engineering degree as I've said and that helps me with the building projects and what have you that we do in, in the town here. Definitely. <coughs> All right. Well, we did put together some questions that we've been asking each of the candidates that were interested in participating in an interview. So I um, guess we can start with the first topic here, um, wind power. With multiple wind turbine projects proposed in the county, the board has recently taken the position that while they support Fort Drum, they would like to see the state's Article 10 site review process run its course for each project instead of making a blanket statement for or against wind tur turbines in general. What is your position on wind turbine issue in Lewis County, which I know you're currently on the board, so. Yes, uh, the Lewis County Board of Legislators, to my knowledge, was the first group that was invited to Fort Drum by General Pyatt and the people at the airfield. Uh, I was part of that delegation that went down. I think there was six or seven of us totally. Yeah. Uh, at that time, General Pyatt asked us a couple of uh, actions that could we help him with. One was could we get them involved in the siting process so that they were aware of what was going on for community input, for uh, technical input from the... Yep. Uh, the other question was if there was a problem that they couldn't overcome technology-wise with the windmills and it really impacted Fort Drum, would we support Fort Drum? Our answer to both those questions was yes. Uh, we have since got the IDA to uh, get Fort Drum listed as an interested party and they will now get all the information from the whole siting 10 process. And if I was reiterated several times, including my position on the FDRLO, uh, nobody in Lewis County wants to see Fort Drum impacted at all. It's the largest economic engine in the Tri-County area. Having worked there 23 years, I understand its importance completely. By the same token, there's an Article 10 process that takes two to three years to go through. Yep. Uh, everybody gets to put input to it, the, the for, the against, the technical people. So our position has been all of the projects that are proposed are not going to be built. Right. And rather than pick and choose one, let's go through this Article 10 process, let that system come out with its decisions, continue our contacts with Fort Drum, and uh, do the benefit for everything, the community, the yep. three county community, as, as well as the people and the taxpayers here. Yep. Sounds good. Higher education is another topic we've been talking about. The county approved $4 million in funding to build a JCC Extension Center at Maple Ridge back in August of 2016 to offer manufacturing and agribusiness training as well as certificate programs for Lewis County residents. The project has stalled while the county and JCC work out an operating agreement, but how important do you feel it is for Lewis County to support and improve higher education opportunities? Uh, I, I believe it's ultim uh, ultimately very important to us to do that. The JCC project would be more for uh, certificate programs and training. Uh, our technologies are changing so fast that 
uh, even though we have a lot of workers in Lewis County, they need to be upgraded in their technological training. Yep. Uh, I see that as very, very important. I've been very supportive of this project. Uh, I've offered engineering advice on the construction and placement and that type of stuff with the project. Okay. Shared services has been another hot topic. Um, with property tax caps, increased state mandated program funding, and other challenges, budgeting has become more and more difficult each year. From a county perspective, what areas would you like to see more effort put into shared services between local municipalities? Well, Lewis County, we're very fortunate that we've, we've been progressive in this area, and we've got a lot of shared services right now. Uh, the process that was involved doesn't allow us to count for some of those shared services that we're doing, and so we're searching new ones. Uh, one example of what we're doing with shared services right now has to do with our Board of Elections and your county, town, and village elections. Uh, we are either running the town village elections along with the regular election in November yep. or such as the village of Laval, they like to do theirs in March, so we run that one for them too. Okay. Uh, we've got other shared services uh, equipment, our yep. grade all and what have you, we serve that back and forth. We have a bucket truck, we assist the village of Laval in the winter putting up the decorations on Main Street and what have you. Yep. And, uh, we, we've got a very talented workforce, and when they come up with a shared services uh, initiative, I fully support them. Great. Facility planning has been another topic the board's recently been dealing with. Uh, recently, the board approved a study to come up with a strategic plan for county facilities. The board feels a strategic plan would help the decision-making process for upgrading and maintaining current facilities and determining if new facilities need to be constructed. Would you be in favor of the county developing and following a strategic plan for facilities? Yes, I was very supportive of that effort. In fact, I, I asked for that effort to get started. <laughs> and a lot of the other legislators uh, agreed with me that it is very important and we now have a project to, to go ahead and gather the data we need for that. But to label it a facilities plan is only partially correct because it's meant to be a five to ten year master plan of where we're going to put county funds and emphasis and without a track record to go back and see what you made a decision on why you made that decision so that you can update and modify as time goes along so it's really a master plan of county activity for the next five to ten years okay so in addition to facilities there's other things that you'll be looking at in the master plan as well yes exactly yep. okay perfect a lot of the county residents are interested in broadband. The county has been working with Mohawk Networks to establish broadband access for underserved areas of the county. Mohawk recently received uh, somewhere between six and seven million dollar in state uh, grant funding mm -hmm. for the project. The county has allowed access to 911 towers for equipment installation as Mohawk Networks constructs their broadband network. Do you feel broadband access is an important asset to the county? And if elected, do you support continuing to work on the broadband project? The short answer to that is yes. Uh, using the 911 towers, uh, myself and a couple other legislators required Mohawk to do a safety study and a loading study for the towers to make sure that they were going to be safe and they weren't going to overload the structural integrity of the tower and also that we had enough room in there for our 911, which has to take priority over this. Right. But yes, I support the broadband. Uh, we've got a large county from Harrisville to Osceola, yep. and we have a lot of people who do not have good broadband or good internet access and what have you right now. Right. So very supportive of that. Okay. Um, our next topic is infrastructure and job creation. What areas would you like to see the county address in terms of improving infrastructure and promoting job creation? Okay, uh, in the infrastructure arena, we have studied the southern part of Lewis County right now with regards to water. Yep. And your infrastructure are roads, water, sewer, electric type services. Uh, electric is handled by National Grid Utility. But the water, uh, we, we looked in the southern end to see what, which systems down there could be expanded. Uh, there's talk of a nano project in Utica taking on, and the guidance to that is they probably will stretch in a 60 mile radius, which puts Laval and Lewis County in that radius. Right. So we wanted to see if they could expand those systems to support more of like bedroom communities, mm -hmm. which will promote more, more construction, more jobs. Uh, we right now are doing a central Lewis County study for water. Right. Uh, 
that will take a look at, uh, although the village of Lovell has not joined that study yet, I hope they will, but that will take a look at Martinsburg and Lovell and New Bremen and such and see where we can gain some services by combining some things, by helping each other out. It, it right. fits under a shared service, but it's also infrastructure. Right, okay. Um, our last topic here is uh, always kind of a hot topic that we like to ask the candidates about. Mm -hmm. um, it's employee health insurance in the hospital, which two, two different topics, but kind of somewhat related. Um, increases in health care insurance costs for county employees has been a steady line item increase in the budget. What ideas would you bring to the table to address the rising costs associated with the county's self-funded insurance program? And also, how important do you feel it is for the county to retain ownership of Lewis County General Hospital? And I'll just preface this with, I know that you serve on the board of, ma uh, the board of managers for the, the hospital as the legislative district uh, representative, so you kind of have some knowledge in the, mm -hmm. the hospital workings. Okay, yes. The, the second question I'll answer first, and, and I strongly have supported, still do support, Lewis County General Hospital, and I've been on the board twice. I was on for nine years back in 95 to 2005, and I've been on the last four years, as you said, a legislative rep. Uh, I put forth a memorandum of understanding between the county and the hospital to help mm -hmm. repay some debt. That started out four years ago at 4.8 million. It's now down to about 1.2. Yep. Uh, the county prefers to take it in monthly installments, and we're doing that. What that allowed the hospital to do was, instead of paying back 4.8 million all at once, it allowed them some operating capital in the interim, and mm -hmm. that has turned out positive because where we were showing a four or five million dollar debt, we are now showing a gain, as you hear at each meeting, yep. uh, and it's approximately three million dollar surplus right now for this year. Right. Uh, some of that's to do with the, the wonderful people that work at the hospital, uh, making changes to how we get our accounts receivable in, how we pay our accounts payable to keep up to date and take about $50,000 in rebates. So very strongly support the hospital. The other part of that question is is the where the, the tough part comes in, if you will. Yeah. Uh, Health care is, is a rising cost for any area. Mm -hmm. uh, as we read the paper and watch CNN and all Fox and News and all those, uh, there are changes coming down that could have serious impacts to that. Yes. What we've done with the hospital is we've offered, uh, the hospital and the county, the, the health insurance covers both, that's why mm -hmm. I say that. Yep. What we've done with the county health plan is we've offered two hybrid plans. Okay. That will help the employees, and, and each plan has to be fit to the particular, right. you know, people's needs. Uh, we didn't have a two-family plan, in other words, a husband and wife. Yep. We had single, we had family. Right. So we created that hybrid in between. So if it's a husband and wife, no children on the plan, uh, they can uh, they can take that plan and they save some money. Right. We then created a high deductible, and that's where you can save some money in premiums as well. Yep. And we've had 50 or 60 people take that in the first year offering. And it's like change with anything else. There's, there's hesitancy, and, and I, I've told everybody that's asked me, Take your time. Consult people who know more about health care than I do. Right. So that you pick the right plan. Right. But our our main plan is a very good plan. Yes. I mean, we, we've done well for all the residents in Lewis County that belong to that plan. Right. And uh, some of the changes are going to be beyond our control, so we're going to have to do some innovative things right. to get that. We just need to know what the changes are first. Right. Okay. Well, that kind of concludes the subjects that we had to cover here. Was there anything else that you could think of that you wanted to tell the voters before they go out and vote on November 7th? Well, I want to be sure that they understand the ballot is double-sided this year, yeah. and uh, I want to be sure they turn that ballot over and look on the back and vote their conscience. There's a constitutional convention on there. Uh, everybody can read the signs, vote no, vote yes, and what they are. I think they have to make up their own personal decision and vote on that, but I, I just encourage them to be aware that there's a two-sided ballot Yes. to look at that. Uh, the other thing is, this is an off-election year. Mm -hmm. uh, historically, they've been lower voter turnout, so I would ask everybody to get out and vote on November 7th. Yes. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks for coming in and taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you. Good luck on November 7th.